Welcome to Game Changers, where faculty members at the University of Texas offer Longhorn Network viewers an in-depth look inside their most innovative research and groundbreaking initiatives. On this episode of Game Changers, we introduce you to Dell Medical School, the first medical school in nearly 50 years to be built from the ground up at a top tier AAU research university. Their vision, to build a vital, inclusive health ecosystem. Their mission, focus on transforming the way people get and stay healthy. We're much more focused on fixing the big problems, the system problems in healthcare, not just on the one-on-one -on -one encounter between a patient and a doctor. Dell Medical School welcomed its first class of 50 students in June 2016. The school was created in large part thanks to an unprecedented vote from Travis County taxpayers. We spend more than any other country on health care, um, and yet our health outcomes are not so great. We should look at the amount of money that Cuba and Costa Rica spend per person on health care. Much, much less. I think it's $800 per person in Cuba, and it's about $9,000 per person in the U.S. The ugly truth about the U.S. healthcare system is that it's driven by financial incentives. It's become big business, and there are a lot of components of that system that don't want to change because um, they have those financial incentives. I definitely think that redefining the system is necessary. To me, that means changing the goal from being a volume-based system to being a value-based system. It means creating better health and achieving better health care results in ways that bring down the costs of keeping more and more people healthy. We're living longer, we're healthier than we've ever been. The problem is, is that we're breaking the bank doing it and people are suffering unnecessarily. We're patching together people who are broken uh, rather than building resiliency so they don't break in the first place. We're doing phenomenally on various aspects of health care. There's certain end of life care we do very well at. There's certain cancer care we do very well at. But as an enterprise, health care is not doing as well as we should as the most powerful, the richest country in the world that should be setting standards. The Dell Medical School was created by the residents of Travis County voting themselves a tax increase in the middle of a recession to create a new medical school as it was the largest city in the country without a medical school. The University of Texas was one of the few remaining tier one universities without a medical school. So with the mandate from the citizens of Travis County, the medical school has taken the responsibility for improving the health of the community that voted it into existence. We have very unusual funding, which also is really important to our DNA. That links us to the community in a really, really interesting way. And obviously, we're constantly, we love that connection, and we're giving back to the community as quickly and as much as we can. This uh, unique opportunity exists because the people of Austin and Travis County voted to increase their taxes to fund this medical school. That's unprecedented. Uh, I don't know of any other academic medical entity here or across the world that was uh, built on that kind of foundation. We take that very seriously, and so we have a very specific commitment to measurably improve health in this region. Starting a medical school from scratch is a big undertaking, no question, but there's also just a huge opportunity in, in doing that. Medical schools, uh, for one thing, you don't get too many med schools developed at tier one research universities like UT last one almost 50 years ago. And it's not like healthcare is perfect today. And so thinking about how could we make healthcare better and then what does that translate into for a new med school, that was an opportunity that we had here that really didn't exist anywhere else. I think the University of Texas is the perfect partner for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is it's a public university here for the greater good. And that aligns mission-wise perfectly with the medical school. We're here to serve uh, the community and Texas at large, and that's exactly what the university is all about. We've done something really remarkable to the community. The community has voted to actually address care for the underserved, right? And that allows us an opportunity to create new models that don't exist elsewhere. 
this really is the first of its kind as a model for, for population health and community health uh, inside this nation. University of Texas, with the 17 other colleges on campus, allows the development of a new med school to occur where there's some synergies with the other colleges. For example, it's important now that we do interprofessional education, meaning that we teach not only the medical students, but we teach pharmacy, nursing, social work, and that they learn together because we know that patient care is improved when the students learn together. The university has incredible resources. I don't think most people recognize the capabilities of this campus until, they're, until they spend some time on campus. And so what we've found are a lot of eager collaborators who share the same mission, who are low on ego and realize that together we can create something much bigger than individually. DelMed has the vision of creating a vital, inclusive health ecosystem. The people who've come here have joined together to transform health care in high-value, meaningful ways for everyone. The healthcare system in itself is an ecosystem, and by that I mean that uh, when you think about healthcare, you think might think about a hospital. You might think about a physician. But in fact, there are a lot of other elements, and as you think more, you start realizing how broad that ecosystem is. So pharmacies are part of the ecosystem. Nurses are part of the ecosystem. Everyone at the hospital, when you walk in, the front desk staff is part of the ecosystem. So that's if you think about healthcare. But for us, we take an even further step back because we're really trying to focus on health. It's all the elements that we need to keep us healthy first and foremost, and then secondarily address issues when we get sick. We have in healthcare amazing people, smart, dedicated, hardworking, caring, who came into healthcare to help people. Doctors, nurses, physical therapists, receptionists, people working in healthcare are there to help people. What they need is to be working in a system that supports those goals, that makes it easier for them and more possible for them to achieve what they wanted to achieve in healthcare when they came into this profession. We're different in a lot of ways. I mean, down to the core, we're different. We're really focused on what we think the future of healthcare should look like. And that's one that produces a lot more value, that produces better outcomes and lowers costs for people. But then that translates into an entirely different training environment too. So for our residents, for our medical students, that means they need a different skill set. And leadership is one of those skills. And so we're designed uniquely around delivering that position of the future. When we return to Game Changers, we'll take a closer look at how today's healthcare system has changed the way Dell Medical School shapes their curriculum and their approach to the future physicians of tomorrow. We started again with this notion, what do we want healthcare to be like? You know, what was wrong with it? How do we fix it? And that translates into a curriculum. You know, what, how do we want the physician of the, of the future to, to be trained? And then once we had that, we could design the spaces specifically around our needs. And so one of the things is we don't do lectures in the traditional way. Um, the, the biggest room is the one that's behind me that has you know, tables on different uh, levels around a central section and it allows us to um, give some instructions from the front and then have groups work at the small tables around the room. This is part of a flipped classroom approach. The other part is we're really focused on communications and on community and the building actually is a place where the students practically live. They've got kitchens here, they've got you know all kinds of rooms for relaxing, but also lots for working and learning in, and so it's, it's specifically built around that notion. It's important for the students to be trained differently because uh, up until now they've been trained to behave in the way that the system wants them to, which is driven, frankly, by the financial incentives that exist in the system. If we want the physicians of the future to act differently, we need to train them differently. We need to empower them to actually challenge the norms in the system 
and then to actually solve the issues um, that the system's not incentivized to solve. My name is Whitney Williams. I'm a first year medical student at Dell Medical School. I personally think about the fact that, you know, there is one healthcare system and the way that it's run in this country is relatively uniform, though the outcomes don't really speak to, you know, that, that infrastructure actually being effective. And so when I think about revolutionizing how people get and stay healthy, I think about how it has to be kind of individualized to each person, to their um, social needs, to their mental needs, to their spiritual needs, um, because all of that really ties in to outcome. We're much more focused on prevention than most schools, and we're much more focused on fixing the big problems, the system problems in healthcare, not just on the one-on-one -on -one encounter between a patient and a doc. That's still critical, but it's not enough to, to have the kinds of changes that we need. For each different group of folks that are at different stages of their career, we hope to be able to demonstrate the benefit of new models of training. The medical students have the longest time course before they're out in the world practicing. Residents get closer, fellowships closer, and then lots of impact to be made on physicians who are practicing today. Now this is a relatively small school in terms of numbers for the medical school. We just have 50 students a year. They are very special students. It's really, really hard to get in here. Um, the program is really a special program, and so they need to punch higher than their weight. I mean, doctor punching is not a great <laughs> analogy. They need to have much more impact than, than, um, than um, otherwise. There's a lot of things in healthcare that we feel we can make better and that we're going to make better. And I think the, the Austin community uh, realized that. Uh, that's why they chose to increase their taxes to bring us here. Um, so we're going to deliver on that promise and really uh, change healthcare. A lot of the work we're doing uh, at the medical school is to create new clinical environments where we can learn, not just operate. And then the same is true for the community. So on behalf of the community and with the community, we're developing conditions that allow us and them to work on issues that they recognize, that they prioritize, and that they're motivated to change. We're very interdisciplinary. You know, it's wonderful at UT to have a great business school, engineering, communications, natural sciences, of course, nursing, social work, I mean, all those fabulous schools and others. And we can bring those different disciplines together in really interesting ways, getting around the traditional silos to look for more creative solutions to healthcare problems. That's a, a wonderful thing that, that we can do here and is absolutely required. These, some of these problems are not going to be easy to address in the traditional ways. Our relationships with the other colleges, we now have probably several, seven or eight that we've got real tight connections with. It just enables us to do so much more than we could do by ourselves. All that talent is actually helping to define the nuance of what it means to uh, revolutionize health and healthcare. And then actively, every time we have sought um, support of any sort, the university has been right there, be it the UT Austin or system, and that's been tremendous. All these places where we could have collaborations, right, and create interschool institutes. Well, the very first one we did was with fine arts. So, you know, fine arts, what the hell? You know, you'd think it would be natural sciences, something else. So the, the reason it's fine arts is we, we realize that, that the whole design approach to problems, you start with a person, what's their problem? Define, you know, walk in their shoes for a day, really understand what it is their problem is, and use that as a basis to rethink the solutions. So that was the first institute we created, the Design Institute for Health. Design is a hard thing to explain, uh, mostly because design is known traditionally by lay people as an aesthetic discipline, right? So you know design through fashion design or graphic design or interior design, and usually people associate it with some really aesthetically pleasing output. And while that may be still true, uh, what people don't realize is what generates that output is actually a very complex and um, nuanced process, a really creative one. And so design is a creative problem-solving approach to uh, finding answers to really tough and complex uh, situations and problems and challenges, and usually with a human okay. issue at the center. Okay. So let me just uh, look over your blood pressure really quickly, okay? In healthcare and health, most of the value 
is in the human transactions, the human interactions. And if we can't unpack those, then uh, we can't solve for them. And design understands where to begin by understanding those human motivations and then takes iterative approaches to creating creative solutions. Physicians haven't been able to prevent us from getting to where we are currently in the healthcare system. And part of that is that we haven't had strong enough leadership within physicians to take on the big, hairy problems with the systems of healthcare. They've been great at the one-on-one -on -one encounter, but not so great at the system level. So we think there's a real need to train those leaders. So um, what that means to us is people who really can rise up and work on with change management, work with business principles, um, also understand how to work within a team just to provide care. The Dell Medical School created this Department of Population Health to pay attention to all those populations, the population of people in care, the population of people in the city, the population of people who aren't getting care but need care, but also Population health looks at the health of the population, not just the sickness of the population. So the notion is to get upstream from when people get sick, and what can we do to promote healthy behaviors, promote health, and to avoid and prevent uh, conditions that can affect their health and well-being. We're creating new models that will be more effective, more inclusive, less expensive. If you think about what it means to create high-value care, it means improving outcomes in ways that reduce costs. Next on Game Changers, we look at how Dell Medical School is not only changing the healthcare model for Travis County, but for the nation as well. Academic medicine, when done right, is all about asking, what are we not thinking about today? Where have we become complacent? Where is there an opportunity that no one has tapped for any variety of reasons? That is the sole purpose of academic medicine. And I would argue that if you don't have an organization whose sole purpose it is to ask that question, divested of any interest in maintaining the status quo, then we will never keep moving towards better health for people. So that is the unique role in my mind for academic medicine, is to play in that particular layer, to be that engine of change that is free of any conflicts of interest uh, and that is dedicated only to asking, what's better for people? What's better for health? Are we defining health in the right way? And are we moving the dial in a measurable way and in a way where individuals say, yes, that made a difference to me and my health? No one's paid for producing more health for you, right? So, you know, your doctor doesn't get paid more if you're healthier. Or even if your doctor is helping to make sure that the conditions that you have are well managed, optimally managed for you. They just get paid for a, an office visit or a surgery or an MRI scan or whatever. And so the current system doesn't allow for the kind of innovation that we see in you know, the restaurant business where you get paid more if you have a better restaurant or the, you know, the service is better, you get more stars, more people come in. That does not happen in healthcare. So part of what we're trying to do is change the ecosystem for healthcare so that we start to reward individuals, systems, companies, medical schools that produce more value, that produce better outcomes, and they're rewarded based on the outcomes that they're producing, not on just turning and doing more stuff, whether it helps or not. We're changing the U.S. healthcare system from a volume-based system that's about treatment to a value-based system that's about health. That's a change of the entire game. One of the most critical aspects of the Dell Medical School is that we have chosen to disavow the existing financial model to make us not complicit in the dysfunction of the system, at least from a financial standpoint. And by clearing ourselves from that motivation, we get a chance to actually design health from a human standpoint, from a care provider and a care receiver standpoint. So that's the most critical aspect of what we've done. We've made that declaration publicly, uh, and then that frees us to actually then act on the issues that uh, really matter. As a nurse,
at a teaching hospital prior to We will change health in many, many ways. We're going to demonstrate new models of care. What that means is, what does an experience look like when you go to your physician's office? Does that need improvement? Absolutely. From my own perspective, I hesitate to go to a physician's office because I'm terrified of the waiting room. So I tend not to, and I get lectured by all my physician colleagues. That's what, what we can do in the physician's office. We're creating new models of clinics. But a big part and parcel of impacting health, not just the delivery of health care, is asking, what does health need? And so maybe health needs more active use of wireless blood pressure monitors so that when you need to get your medication adjusted, you stay at home, you get it tested, the, the signal goes to, I don't know, maybe a pharmacist, and then you get a prescription updated, and you don't even have to leave your home. That is the world I dream about. The problems in healthcare are no longer medical science issues. They're actually population, societal, and policy issues. They're technology issues. They're issues around creativity and, and gumption, frankly. We can't create a new health system by pretending that the existing entities are going to change it all by themselves. So we need new collaborators with fresh perspectives, people with business minds, technology minds, uh, with uh, policy minds, um, creative collaborators. In the next several years, as this unfolds, I think we will create a very powerful model of achieving better health for the people interacting with Delmet, for the whole community in Travis County, and hopefully to be a model for other places as well. I'm hoping that the medical school can help understand health in the broader context. We want to understand that health lives outside of a healthcare context, and we want the city to understand that. So that when we're talking about Austin's one of the most rapidly growing cities in the country, 20,000 people move into the city every year. That's the town moving to the city every year. We can just let it happen, or we can say, let's embrace that as an opportunity to build health into the infrastructure of a community. I think we believe in the UT Austin motto, what starts here changes the world. And we don't want to just create medical students and physicians. We want to create leaders and want to be the change agent to do that. This is truly the opportunity for this country to step back and rethink and redesign academic medicine. In addition, this is about health. People live or die by this. This is not um, an esoteric exercise. So we have to. There's a sense of urgency about this. Dell Medical School is going to be a game changer by changing the role of the doctor to one of both being an expert at diagnosis and treatment, but also an expert in prevention, an, ex an expert in health promotion, an expert in leadership. I know that if we can show that, that this approach actually results in a, a more healthy community, that the expectation will be that other medical schools will follow the lead and, and graduate physicians who embrace health as their mission, not just sick care. We're trying to add a dimension to the standard medical education that provides training in leadership, in enabling teams, in involving the community, and in being focused not just on health care, but on health. Dell Medical School will be a game changer because we are fundamentally disrupting the foundation of how a health system operates by beginning with the people who will serve in it. We've really got to accelerate the pace of change and be a game changer because frankly in our work if we're not a game changer people are living or dying based on the results we produce. So there's an urgency to this we have to achieve and I think the folks that we've got around us are those that, that will be happy with nothing less than changing the game. The Dell Med School is a game changer because that's really what it's built to do. So we are completely redefining what it means to be a med school, what academic medicine uh, should be doing, how it's related to a community, um, and how we relate to the entire health ecosystem.